Really? Just like that. It became old news really fast, Turbo. We just got out here and you already want to go inside? That's what I thought. Hi, baby. It's so nice to see you. So nice to see you, Turbo. I'm sorry if I'm boring you. I've been over here doing math and that's pretty boring. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. This is probably, it's always a curse when I say this at the beginning of the video, but probably going to be a shorter video. At least it needs to be a shorter video because I've got a lot of stuff going on this weekend. And by this weekend, I mean Thursday through Tuesday. So I got to uh, just do everything. And basically, I, have, I don't know how to, I have an hour and a half to film instead of spreading it out through the week like I usually do. That's not going to make it in the pool. You handed it to me in the left. I'm not a lefty. You know that, Turbo. We'll try again. Bring it back. Bring it back over here. But you forgot the toy. It doesn't really matter. I can guarantee you. He doesn't even care about the toy. He just wants an excuse to get in the pool. All right. Here you go, Turbo. Ready? Turbo. Hey, you got to pay attention. Ready? Boom. There you go. You can do, go get in the pool. You can swim. Go swim. That's all he wants. He just wants permission to get in the pool. It's not hot out. I don't know why he wants to get in there. Anyways, uh, picking up from last week's video where I planted a bunch of things and the week prior to that planted even more things and I was talking about root stimulator and that I needed to put it down. I usually like to do two of the applications and I spread them out by about two weeks. So when I put them in the ground, I make sure to water them in and then do the root stimulator, wait a couple weeks, make sure that they're well watered, do another application with the root stimulator. Both of these right here are fine products. They're both an IBA, which is just indole 3 butyric acid. It's the most common of the hormones that you'll find in most of your root stimulators. I'm very easily distracted this morning. He's having such a good time down there. Only difference between these two products is cost, right? This is $6.99 for a small bottle. I'll go by the weight on it because everything else is in the pints and milliliters. So that's uh, 1.2 pounds for seven bucks. Whereas in this one getting at 9.7 pounds for, I think this was 28. So this is a much, much, much better buy. And they're the same thing. You can even look right here. What does that say? 0 0.004 on the IBA and then 99.99996 for the other ingredients. And it's the same thing as down here. And the application rate's the same. Three and a half tablespoons per gallon of water. I'm using a three gallon thing back here. I'm getting ahead of myself. I was gonna talk more about IBA first. Well, regardless, it comes out to being like 0.65. Yeah, 0.65 cups per three gallons of water. So I already, I did that math there. So that's what I was mathing about was price and then that, and it wasn't fun. I don't, I don't wanna do math this morning. I haven't always been someone who was really big on using root stimulators, unless I was maybe rooting a cutting of a plant that is particularly difficult to root or ones that I just have had trouble with fruiting in the past. But after last year's fiasco with a bunch of arbs that I planted that ended up dying due to lack of rain, I decided this year that whenever I put perennials in the ground, particularly shrubs, just go ahead and use a root stimulator. It's an easy enough thing to do. And the whole point is that it just helps the plants start to establish themselves more quickly into the ground. The sooner the plants start to put out new roots, the sooner they start to spread out into that hole that you've dug and then outside of the hole that's been dug and they can take in water, right? So you're not having to drench them quite as often. I pretty much stay on the same watering routine regardless with the root stimulators. The thing with IBA and really all of the rooting hormones is that you can overdo it. So I know, I think the last thing I had read about it was that when uh, I think it was at a rate of 10, so it was like 10 times the amount that was suggested, which is a lot, that with corn you saw really good root production, but there was basically no uptake of macronutrients inside the plants. So it's important, follow the directions, don't overdo it. This isn't something where more is more, just stick with what they say to use. And uh, it gets the plants often moving more quickly. What this does is it stimulates the auxin, the hormone in the plant, to uh, start moving roots out. Then the IBA is pretty much the most common one. If you're just gonna buy a liquid one from like a big box store, that's probably what you're going to be using. Even most of the powders, you start moving to the gels and some other ones, the other types of hormones, and they all do different things. I know with IBA, you can also use it to help callus off plants for cuttings and getting them 
moving, getting them rooted. And uh, it is also useful with tissue culture. Uh, it's used very commonly with tissue culture. People argue about what's the best. There are different types that you use along different steps of the process, and it varies from plant to plant and what you're trying to root. That's a whole nother discussion. I just wanted to talk about why I'm using a root stimulator and uh, which one I like to use. These two, uh, really any of them, as long as it's at least the 0.004% of IBA. <laughs> That's what I was talking about. And these are also a 4103 on the NPK. So just a little bit of nitrogen. It's got some phosphorus in there and then some potassium. The phosphorus also helps with the root development. Ideas to help reduce transplant shock, reduce stress. Oftentimes roots sometimes get broken when you're repotting things or if you've had to loosen the soil a lot around the root ball, maybe things were root bound to begin with and you got a lot of cuts that have been made. This is just gonna help get things established more quickly. That's the whole point. The sooner they establish themselves, then the less you have to worry about transplant shock. And the plant's becoming dehydrated. There we go. All right, that was everything I wanted to say about it. I had the mental notes bullet pointed in my head. And excuse you, Blue Jay was like, you're right in my ear, dude. You can't see it. There's drama, drama between a male cardinal and a, what the heck was that noise? Was that the Blue Jay? Where are you going, bud? Oh, that was just a Blue Jay squabble. And a, there was a male cardinal that decided to be a wookie-loo. I thought he was part of it. He wasn't part of it. Also, I just realized that I completely masked this incorrectly. This is not 9.7 pounds. That's the density. It's 128 ounces. That, that's what a gallon is. But so still, this is a pint, so that's like 16 ounces. Not like, I'm pretty sure that that is 16 ounces. So it would take eight of these to equal one of those. So $56, $28. This, this is a much better deal. I just wanted to make that correction because that, it's not nine point, it, that's a whole, it doesn't matter. I don't feel like doing all that. I don't want to math anymore. I want to do plant stuff. It's not gonna be exciting though, I'm just watering. I have all these newly planted and potted things going on down here. What do I have? The double dot begonia, Musella laziocarpa, Fatsia japonica, Musa no no. I have a palm that just got repotted and that'll be in a video, either the video after this one or the video after the next one. I don't know, at some point. I've been bulk filming for a while now because, don't wanna make anybody dizzy here, I uh, was thinking that maybe moving into 2025, it might be nice to get back into uploading three videos a week. I, don't know, I haven't made my mind up on that yet, but if I'm going to do that, then that needs to be something that I have prepared for. So I've been outlining videos. I have like 40 videos planned out and many of them already filmed. So have to be edited, but that way when we move into the new year, it won't be like, oh, I have to think of more videos. They're already there. And that means that the videos that come out during the winter time, at least uh, the ones that would be during the week, it'd either be Wednesday, just Wednesday, or Tuesday, Thursday, the videos would be filmed out here. And I think that would be kind of nice during the winter time to have that little reprieve from being in the gross space. That gets old, at least for me. I don't like to film that much in there anymore. No promises there. That's just something I've been thinking about doing. Time will have to pass and need to see what's going on in life, but I think that it might be doable if I get enough pre-filming done. So you see, I'm not even doing a ton with it. I just wanna make sure that it's enough that it's gonna flush and go around the roots, but it's not like I'm using this to hydrate the plant, right? I already want the soil to be moistened up for the plant so that things are well hydrated. Oh, as soon as I start to see the water coming out the bottom, that's good. Not doing this is one of those things where I want to flush it through and flush it through and keep doing that just one time through, that's all it needs. With little plants, they're actually the hardest ones to get that stuff into because it just, the size, the girth, it's a big watering can. Water just comes flying right out of it. I feel like there were tons of plants I need to use this on and I'm going, oh wait, what, what else do I have to do this to? Oh, was the entire shade garden for one, everything over here. They all need a drink. Make sure the rodeo, rodea, I always call it a rodeo. Rodea gets some, it's, when you're doing this in the ground, you tend to use a lot more of it. Unless you have a nice mulch ring built up, which I do with this one. You can see how that helps get it more down around the roots. 
another reason that I was waiting to do this until the ground was fully saturated. I ended up just wicking out to everything around the plants, which isn't very useful, right? Need to make sure that there's enough going in here to actually do something for the plants if it gets wicked up by the surrounding soil outside of the root ball, then it's not really gonna do anything, at least not for a while. What the freaking crap am I trying? Okay, there we go. Went at that for a long time. It's not that complicated. I was pushing down the full force of my palm and twisting. That lid did not want to come off. And I also meant to talk about Biostarter you know, from, who is it, Espoma. Good product. I just can't use Espoma products out here because of my dogs. They will eat the dirt anytime I use an Espoma product in the ground. And uh, those starter fertilizers, while they're great, it's still not really the same thing. It's a blend of materials that help encourage roots to grow out through activity through like mycorrhiza, which is really, really, really important for the plants. So you could use both of these simultaneously. It shouldn't hurt anything. To the best of my knowledge, there's no IBA or actual hormone in the Biotone starter or the ones from Job's, any of those soil amendment type of starters. There's a few left over here, and I think I already talked about this though. And somewhat of a roundabout way, this needs to come in contact with the root ball. So you don't want it flushing all over the place when you're putting it down. So if I do this and it spreads all over the place, down over to the sides, all that stuff over there, that's not gonna do anything for this plant. It needs to be in contact. It's supposed to be one of the safer products to use, tripped over a dog toy. I think that's everything over here. Gentle. That's the word I would use to describe it as gentle. So something to give the plants a little boost and help get them moving more quickly. I'm, can I reach you guys? <laughs> can I get there? There we go. Barely, but made it. Oh, spilled a little. That's okay. That's all right. Doesn't need to be a lot. Just enough to flush through the pot. Try and make sure not to get it all over the leaves. Just like with most fertilizers. So plants that I would say it's most important to do this with or would benefit the most from a root stimulator would be things like uh, arbs, arborvitae, arborvitae, I don't care how you say it, thudias. They tend to throw a fit when you plant them up, especially if you're doing it during the summertime. Spring, fall, not as much of an issue. Anything that is on the border of cold hardy for where you live. So if you're in zone... I'd say five and you're trying the baju bananas, I would use a root stimulator right away when you get them in the ground. It helps get them rooted, establish more quickly. Crepe myrtles, they're not particularly fussy about being moved around and planted, but if you're in zone five or six and you want them to survive your winters, plant them off early in the spring as soon as possible. Use a root stimulator, they're going to establish more quickly. It reduces transplant shock. And the sooner they start to put out their roots, the more good stuff they're taking up into their system. And then hopefully the more sugars they'll have stored up for the winter time. And therefore, the more cold hardy they will be. Colocasias, same thing. They can be finicky if you're ever transplanting a colocasia or transplant, really transplanting anything. Good idea to use a root stimulator when you've done that because you're actually actively chopping roots on the plant field dug plants, which is one of the reasons arbs fall in that category a lot. A lot of arbs that people buy are field dug and uh, perhaps not that well established. Oftentimes the con containers usually just full of clay and some root on them. So that's why it's really important with those ewes. I love a ewe, but if you plant those in the heat of the summer, it's really beneficial to make sure that they're mulched well and you're using a root stimulator, even a biotone starter or whatever starter type of amendment you want to use is good for them. It's just about getting them established quickly, as quickly as possible. Getting the roots to start moving out as quickly as possible so that they can take in water and start growing and have some sort of defense against the heat if you're planting things during the summer. Or if they're a plant that's really finicky. Ooh, there are some dogwoods. Some dogwoods, uh, particularly some of the Chinese more fancy varieties, they can be very prone to having issues if their roots are cut up use a root stimulator. Any palms like sable palm, 
if you dig those up and you cut the root, whole root dies on a lot of them. So root stimulator, good idea with those. And I would say the main takeaway with a root stimulator is really just follow the directions to a T, to how much you're supposed to use, to the frequency. Usually the frequency is going to just be one application. I only do the repeat on plants that are really stubborn to get going or plants that I know I had to do some tearing at the roots. Some of the yews that I planted, you can't see them from here. They're on the other side of that hedge down there that it was hard to get the hole dug far enough because there are trees, roots from the maple up there or plumbing, there are pipes that went underneath everything. So I had to split the root ball on some of them. Those are ones that I make sure to go ahead and do an extra application. Okay, I was fighting a burp through everything I just said, so that's why my voice sounded weird. I don't know why I did that. Could have just paused the recording and just let it happen. The, the coconut palms, the one that I got in the mail from Broward Palm, it had its roots chopped to pieces. And that is one that I made sure to reapply. Or if some, like I showed some of the ones that I did back there, you can't see them, in the shade garden where I was before, with those, there's a good amount of runoff with those. That's when I tell myself, I might need to give us another application because a lot of it may have gone off to the sides and not quite been enough to actually get around that root ball. Is that loud? That's probably really loud and obnoxious. Also, I know there's a deficiency going on here. We'll talk about it when that video comes out. Oh, hibiscus. Hibiscus, they really benefit from using a root stimulator. I think that's partially because they don't like to be overpotted. So when you pick up a hibiscus from a nursery, big box store, whatever the case, and you get it home, they should be bumped up into a larger container because they're usually just massive for their nursery pot. But if you go too big, then they tend to sit around for a really long time. So they're a plant where really sticking to that two inch max outside diameter of the root ball is a good rule of thumb to follow. And the root stimulators, I've just noticed if you hit them with that when you get them planted up they seem to take off a lot faster and of course unfortunately a lot of this is anecdotal but there's plenty of research on the topic you can look it up if you want to it's not a product where more is more like i said you really stick with what the directions say too much hormone on a plant it just spells disaster you start to have really weird looking foliage i think i mentioned the study with corn about how they're an extreme lack of macronutrient inside of the plant because it's just the plant was so focused on just putting out lots and lots of roots but not on growth so it is usually a one and done kind of thing where you just do it one time and you don't have to do it again uh, for the most part i just got very distracted by a butterfly one application for a root stimulator that i think is very useful is with banana trees and i already talked about that a little bit but something that happens to a lot of people is you'll plant a banana and it'll just sit there for a couple of months will pass and it's just a pseudo stem with a couple of really scraggly leaves coming out usually if you give them a good drench with a root stimulator that can help snap them out of that that can be caused from a variety of things generally it can mean that the plant is just not balanced <laughs> i don't know if that's how to say it things like vpd and other things play a role in plants getting themselves established there's a whole thing that goes on between above ground and below ground but essentially it's just that the plant needs to put out some roots so it's either root wrapped or it just needs something to help it along to say hey go ahead and put out those roots so that you can take up some water and start growing obviously that could also mean having to pull the plant up and check the root ball and see what's going on with it that's a whole a whole video on my bananas stall like that but oftentimes if you just hit them with a root stimulator that can help snap them out of that or completely and <laughs> totally spell disaster if it was root wrapped now, if you wanted to go for the ultimate combo of getting a plant established, I would plant it off with a root stimulator, follow the appropriate watering schedule for newly planted trees and shrubs, or house plants, you know, just basically keep the soil consistently moist. Not talking about cactus and succulents here, right? But the whole normal, all the normal stuff. You do that for a few months, then you can slowly reduce the frequency of how often you're making sure the plants are watered in the ground top two to three inches of soil if it's dry water them that's just the way that goes using the root stimulator going to help speed that up if you also add in some of that biotone starter that's going to help establish a lot of good flora and fauna really around the root ball and uh, maybe inoculating with some mycorrhiza the powdered forms there's mixed 
information I've gotten on that over the years is whether or not there's even a point. A lot of people say you can just grab a chunk of native soil from a few inches down below the surface and blend that in and that should help establish the area with mycorrhizae. Ultimately, establishing a healthy soil is going to be the way to go as far as getting the plants moving. That root stimulator, it's just a punch to get them moving, but by adding the starter, it's just more of an organic blend to have around the plants and maybe inoculating with mycorrhiza. There's, you know, varying debates about whether or not that does anything. Basically establishing a healthy fungal network underneath the roots, underground, does amazing things for the plants. There are some studies, I can't remember her name. It was a really interesting one where they planted, I believe it was fir trees, paper birch, and cedar trees, and then injected them with carbon, carbon isotopes, two different types. And by doing that, they were able to trace whether or not the trees were communicating with each other or passing carbon from one plant to another. And they were, and that has led to lots and lots and lots of other very interesting studies. The whole point there is that it's important to have that stuff underground, right? So the root simulator, it's just to get them going. Ultimately, having a really healthy soil is going to be the best thing longevity wise for the plant. The stimulator is just to help to stimulate them, get them moving and going and help get involved in that underground network where the trees can talk to each other. I know that this sounds absolutely ridiculous. I'll try and find the study and link it below. Something I could talk about all day, but I would want to actually go through the studies. There are three or four of them that have been very, very, very fascinating about what trees are doing with each other with their underground networks. And it's all facilitated by fungal networks, fungal structures, where uh, I think, I don't remember what kind of tree it was, where if a deer was chewing on it, it would start to emit signal out into the network for nearby trees of the same species, mostly the same species. Not, not all the trees can all talk to each other. Like in that fir, birch, cedar study, I don't think that the cedars were getting anything from the firs and the birches. But back to the deer thing. So they would get bit, chewed on, send out a signal to nearby trees, and those trees would then start to emit an oil, really, from the foliage that doesn't taste good which isn't that crazy. And when they went through and just cut on the branches of the trees, they didn't do that. So it's like the trees could tell whether or not they were being chewed on versus just somebody chopping off a branch. It's just nuts. Mama trees take care of their baby trees. That was another interesting find with these carbon studies that you know, in the forest trees, they're huge, 80 feet tall, and all their saplings down below, you, they can trace nutrient or carbon going from mama tree to the saplings, they, they feed them, they feed their young. So that's why it's so important to just have a really healthy soil in general. I think it was that when the mother tree would get cut down, that it would just flood out everything it had to its surrounding saplings and seedlings and fellow trees that were in their network. They have little diagrams and plots that show how much comes out from the different sized trees. And you can see that the seedlings don't really give much out. Seedlings, saplings don't put out, don't do much for the surrounding plants. Whereas the larger the tree, the more that they're putting out there for the plants that are nearby them. And like I said, it's not all plants doing it to each other, which goes on to deforestation and uh, the, lots of topics that I think that there needs to be more research on and really reforestation. So what plants to put with each other that are going to keep them the healthiest and the happiest to have that combined network underground. It's, it's neat stuff. I could go on about it for a long time, but I would want to do that when I have the actual studies in front of me so I'm not butchering. So I could have butchered a whole bunch of this. So I want to make sure to find those studies and link them down below if I can find them again. It's been a few months since I looked into all that. It's one of those studies. I think it was the one about mama tree and baby trees. I think that was from like last year when I read that one. Uh, anyways, I've diverted. You get the point. Healthy soil's best way to go. I think I already said it. Stimulators just to stimulate them, just to get them doing everything more quickly. Oh, heliconias. I should have talked about this so much earlier in the video. Heliconias, bird of paradise, and palm trees. Plants that like to establish themselves before they really do much as far as growth goes. They're ones that I really like to hit with a root stimulator. So with the heliconia, if you repot it, you may notice they just kind of hang out and don't do much for a while. Then all of a sudden, boom, they take off. 
Same thing with bird of paradise, where it's white bird of paradise or an orange bird of paradise, and a lot of palm trees. You repot them, they just sort of sit still for a few months, sometimes longer, and then all of a sudden they take off and start doing their thing. Hitting those with a root stimulator, right when you repot them, it really helps speed up the process of getting them moving because it you know, makes the whole process of them filling out their container go much more quickly. And then you end up with a lot more flowers to sit back and enjoy sooner than later. Okay, that's enough of that. I, this could have been a four minute long video. Root stimulators help establish plants quickly, help avoid transplant shock. That's pretty much all there is to it and follow the directions. But you know how we do things over here. I like to have a discussion. I think it's more helpful that way. Ooh, I think I'm seeing spider mites. Looks like it. Yep, that's gonna go. That's not a plant I'm attached to. I'm gonna cut that out. It's gonna go. Same thing with this one over here, probably. Too late in the year to be messing with all of that. This is really the time of year when the bugs and might start to go absolutely insane because the air is more dry here in September and uh, the day lengths are getting shorter. So they just sink their little teeth into the plants and start destroying them. And the Redemption Colocasia is not one that I'm all that attached to. So rather than spray it and watch the spray just come right off the foliage because it doesn't stick to the dang things, I'm just gonna cut them out. I don't have time to mess with those things. It's late enough in this season. I've lost my attachment to them. I think everything else out here is far for the course. I don't, nothing's changed. So there's not much else to talk about. And there really isn't much else to do right now either. I just need to water. I don't have anything that needs to be planted. There are a few things that need to be repotted, but I need some more soil first. So that's not going to happen right now. I guess this is, this is it. Real short video, but hopefully a productive one may be helpful. That would be the whole point. Anyways, comment down below. Let me know how y'all are doing. Are you just an old front? Okay, good, it's just an old front. Thoughts with the root stimulators, soil health, uh, the whole thing with the trees talking to each other and feeding each other. It's a topic that absolutely is fascinating and I'd love to hear what anybody has to say about it. And then the little blip in there about maybe moving to three videos a week from two. Let me know what you think. That's what I used to do. And uh, it was obviously more work, but I didn't mind it, they'd be shorter videos, of course, but I think that's okay. And I don't think that would be something that would start until probably uh, November or January, somewhere in there. I need to get a good backlog of stuff to edit. And I really do think it would be nice during the winter time, instead of having so many videos being filmed in the grow space, which it's hard to film stuff in that grow space. There's not much room to work with. Once I have the cameras and lights and everything set up and all my materials out and I'm in front of the camera, it's like, it's just, you gotta go with it. If I forgot something and I don't have it there, then it takes me like 15 minutes to take things apart to clear a path to get out from the space I have to film in there. And uh, it would be refreshing to be able to see outdoors when a lot of us are stuck inside, I think. It would also be annoying because I know I would have people constantly asking me, about how things are outside, but it's also December or January in St. Louis. But I think that's something where people are, they're just gonna have to figure it out. It's not that complicated. Lots of people film stuff in advance and it would be nice to just have everything pre-filmed for the winter time. Uh, not everything, right? I would still probably have some unboxing videos and then the Saturday videos, which are a vlog. So there will still be filming going on inside the growth space, but at least it'd be one or two videos during the week where we're outside. I think that'd be nice. I would enjoy it when I'm editing go, oh, everything looks so good out there. I miss it. Gosh, everything is looking so good out here. Very thirsty. We got a little bit of rain, not really enough to do anything, but it was something. It helped wash the dust off of the plants. Didn't really help that much as far as rehydrating goes. We're still in a severe drought. Hence the other reason with the root stimulator. It's just necessary. You gotta get those plants established quickly so that they can reach out and go down deep into the soil where there's water because uh, this isn't working for me. I'm spending hours a day watering, which is not at all normal for this time of year. I wanna do garden tour things so badly, but it's not time, almost time. I think the video after this one, it will be time. How did this happen? What the crap? That is a gigantic weed. How have I not seen this? I mean, remember, it was just, a couple weeks ago, I was pulling weeds in a video. You would think I would have noticed something that's like seven and a half, eight feet tall over there, but apparently not. I blame you guys, it's your fault. You saw that video, nobody pointed out to me that I missed a six foot tall weed in the background. 
I say six foot because it's probably grown a foot since whenever it was I was pulling weeds last. Actually, that might have been about a month ago. Might have been the last garden tour. For some reason, garden tours also become the time when I decide to do my weeding, which is really stupid. It's something I should do beforehand, but yeah, here we are. It works, so I've been doing it. These are driving me crazy. I'm thinking about coming in here and cutting off the old spent inflorescence on these hedekiums. They're just so dry and crispy. That heat that we had in late July and early August combined with the drought, they haven't aged well. Sometimes these will stay looking kind of nice, but that has not been the case this year. They're looking really gross and crispy. I don't see anything that's swelled up to a point where I think there's any seed that would be worth trying to hold on to or use. If there were, it would be down lower probably. Nah, not seeing anything. There's only a couple new ones coming up. That's unusual. Usually there's more than that this time of year, but you know, haven't had a ton of rain. Been watering a lot, but still, it's just, it's not the same, right? Rain is so much better than hand watering. The plants like it a lot more. It does a better job of penetrating deeper on the roots. What are you doing? Why do you got your face in the begonia? We don't mess with the begonias. You smell a squirrel. Was there a squirrel friend in there? That's probably what that was. Oh, and also the pollen and mold's really bad, so when I stand out here and talk for too long, I'll lose my voice my throat hurts for like three or four days. So this is probably long enough. I'll go ahead and wrap it up since there isn't really anything else productive to do. I can just wander around and just ramble for a long time. Some people enjoy that, but uh, I don't, I don't want to do that to my throat. I got a lot of filming to do over the next few days. So, like I said, comment down below. Hope everybody's doing well. Having a great day, a great night. Everything's going absolutely beautifully for you. I need to water that. Just watered it. I watered everything this morning before I came out here watered very early in the morning thinking that would do the trick but here we are 11 30 and nope not looking very happy and of course as always and most importantly everybody keep on growing bye bye